Louisville Slugger is the name in baseball bats and has been since 1884. Hillerick and Bradsby Company, the maker of Louisville Slugger bats, scored an 80 to 90 percent market share with their wood bat models until a change rocked the industry. Aluminum. Aluminum bats were originally made in the 1960s for amateur softball teams by aluminum companies searching for another way to sell their product. In the early 1970s, aluminum bats caught on in amateur baseball when players and coaches discovered that aluminum bats didn't break like wood bats, which could mean more hits for the batters. Batting averages soared while expenses fell on amateur baseball and softball teams. In 1974, the NCAA legalized the use of aluminum bats in college baseball, which had a negative effect on the wood bat industry. H&B's wood bat production fell from 7 million to 800,000 in the course of a decade. At that time, the Louisville Slugger aluminum bats were manufactured for the firm by Alcoa Aluminum Company. After legalization of aluminum bats, H&B realized they had to get serious about aluminum bat production. They purchased Alcoa's fully stocked plant in Santa Fe Springs, California and went about learning how to manufacture aluminum bats from the employees of the Alcoa plant. The first bats didn't meet H&B's quality standards, but that would change. In the mid-1980s, the company built a state-of-the-art aluminum bat manufacturing plant in Ontario, California. It decided to remain in California in order to be close to their aluminum suppliers. Currently, 95% of bats used in amateur baseball and softball today are aluminum, and the Louisville Slugger TPS and TPX brands are among the most popular. Manufacturing aluminum bats is significantly more complex than manufacturing wood bats. The machinery is more sophisticated, and the employees tend to be trained on one machine and specialize in it whereas with wood bat manufacturing, employees switch stations frequently. First, seamless hollow aluminum tubes in diameters from 2 inches to 2 and 3 quarter inches are purchased from an aerospace aluminum supplier. The different tubing diameters are necessary because adult baseball bats, youth baseball bats, and softball bats all feature different barrel diameters. H&B uses several aluminum suppliers who trademark their own alloys. Suppliers submit new alloys to H&B for testing as long as three years before a finished bat comes to market. The aluminum tubes are cut to lengths from 16 to 30 inches, depending on the model of bat being made. The next step is swaging, or shaping the bat. Barrel and handle diameters vary between models. Where the bat begins to taper also differs depending on the model. In the swaging process, the shape of the desired bat model is machined into two opposing dies. These dies rotate around the tube as it enters the machine, while also moving in and out to impact the tube and reduce it down until the desired diameters are achieved. As the tube is tapered down, it grows in length. The shaped tube then goes through a cleaning operation that removes lubricants resulting from the swaging process. The tube is now ready for the heat treating procedure. The bats are heat treated to improve the strength of the metal. The unfinished bats are lowered into a molten salt bath. There, they are heated to temperatures over 800 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. The bats are then quenched in a water tank that creates a supersaturated solution that makes the aluminum bats harder and more durable. After they come out of the water tank, the bats are heated for an additional 12 hours at approximately 300 degrees in an aging furnace. Some TPX and TPS bats feature a higher strength aluminum alloy and they will spend another 24 hours in a furnace. This heat treating process makes the bats even stronger. There are two ways to close up the end of the bat. Closing the metal itself over the bat is known as the end spinning operation. The bat is rotated, heated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit 
and then formed to move the softened metal over to permanently seal the bat end. Other models receive a polyurethane end cap, but must first have grooves machined around the inside of the bat. The end cap is then snapped into place at the final assembly operation. Some TPX and TPS models feature a sound conditioning to reduce the metallic sound that occurs when a ball meets a metal bat. These models will have polyurethane foam hydraulically shot through the open handle end or through the barrel end depending on the engineering design. Then the bats are polished, shot peened, or buffed to achieve a certain surface feel or texture. Colorful cosmetics are applied to aluminum bats using a silk screening process. Graphics are printed on the surface of the barrel and then the bats are dyed with a multitude of colors. The finish is then sealed to lock in the colors. The inks used in Louisville Slugger bats are highly resistant and will not come off on the ball. Non-slip rubber grips are applied using air pressure while wrap grips are applied by hand. In order to close the handle end, the TPS and TPX bats are put into an automatic welding booth where the knobs are attached. The strong weld is controlled through voltage, amperage, and welding wire applied at the joint. The weld is then inspected and cleaned. The final steps in the production process are to apply the decals, pack the bats into cartons, and ship them all around the world. There are about 300 different models of bats made at the Ontario plant. Currently, the plant produces 5,500 bats a day in lots of 100, using 50 different setups to make the various models. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to change over to a new setup, which they do an average of five times a day. The plant runs at capacity through the fall and winter to meet peak shipping times in February and March. The introduction of aluminum bats forever changed the baseball world. Hillerick and Bradsby, which was as steeped in tradition as the game itself, was slow to embrace the new bats whose manufacturing process had no similarity to wood bats. However, once they committed to it, they were able to climb to the top and give consumers the quality they expected in the Louisville Slugger name.